Bertrand Russell. He always wanted his moral proclamations to be rooted in something beyond himself and the conventions of his own community. In other words, if he saw a child being raped, he wanted to say that is wrong, that is categorically wrong, that is evil, you shouldn't, you must not do that, and he wanted to mean something more than, well, I don't like that very much, or I don't approve. If he saw, if Bertrand Russell saw Jewish people being loaded onto trains in Nazi Germany, he wanted to say that is wrong, that is categorically evil, that you must not do this, you should not do this, and to mean something, refer to something more than, well, our community conventions frown upon that sort of thing. Um, our community the conventions looked down, we don't approve of that sort of thing. Uh, uh, to which the Nazis would have quite easily turned around and said, well, actually, these are our cultural conventions, mm -hmm. these are our community's conventions, and so by those standards, we're actually doing good here because we're protecting ourselves from the imminent Jewish threat. Let me take one more example. Um, females, uh, let's say if Bertrand Russell were to see a group of people who were oppressing women, and they were practicing the very barbaric uh, female circumcision, he wanted to be able to say, no, 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 no that's wrong. That's, that's just evil, it's barbaric, it's cruel, it's wrong, you shouldn't, you must not do this. And he wanted to be saying something more than, well, we've got the majority of vote against that in our culture. But of course, if the vote went the other way tomorrow, then, you know, female circumcision would be just fine, go ahead. In other words, Russell wanted his, his uh, morality to be rooted in something beyond himself and the conventions of his own community. This is very important to him. And so throughout his career, he, he swings back and forth between different uh, theories of morality, um, they, largely between two, one called the motivism and one called error theory. And he swings back and forth between these theories, error theory, motivism, error theory, motivism. He just goes back and forth. Now, again, because of time limitations, we don't have time to go into the details of what those theories are about. I'll gladly talk to you a little bit in a bit more detail afterwards if you're interested. But for our conversation right now, what's, what's interesting is that neither of these theories or any other were ever satisfying to him, not even close. And at times, Bertrand Russell just wants to shrug his shoulders, throw his hands up in exasperation, and he just wants to give up. He toys with the idea of giving up on morality altogether. He, he toys with that idea of giving up on morality altogether. Um, needless to say, his political dissidents, for which he paid for quite dearly, uh, he was actually imprisoned on several occasions. One time, he was five months in Her Majesty's prison. There he is, sitting there. He managed to prison for five months. It means to say his political dissidence only served to wind this tension that he's felt between ethics and uh, logic without God. It only served to wind this tension even tighter. Right? Um, so you see, Bertrand Russell felt this tension not in academic philosophical, just in academic philosophical discussions or philosophical essays that he was writing, but at the level at which life is lived. He felt this tension when he was sitting for five months in Her Majesty's prison, right? That's, that's what he, he felt it sometimes just in conversation with uh, his 12-year-old niece, who said, well, why should I do that? And she said, he says, well, you know, you should do it because it's good for society. And she says, well, why should I care what's good for society? And he says, well, you just should. Hardly compelling and, and not very um, satisfying. In the end, though, Russell does not give up on morality. He doesn't, why not? Does he discover a way of reconciling this logic and ethics without God? Does he, does he do? Well, not really. Here's what he says. He says, no amount of logic, even though it be my own, will persuade me to do so, to give up on morality. He says, in other words, his own logic and reason were telling him, look, if you get rid of this Judeo-Christian God character, and, and you don't have anything like it to replace him, then then what you're left with is every moral pronouncement can only refer to your own preferences, mm -hmm. the way you feel about things, mm -hmm. or, or perhaps to the community to which you belong, and the way they feel about things, and the conventions that express those feelings, or perhaps through uh, the, it can, they'll refer to your uh, genetic mutations that have happened over uh, in the millennia through the, the evolutionary process, or perhaps a combination of all three. Mm -hmm. It can only refer... His logic and reason were saying, he can only refer to these things, that's, that's all. But he says, no amount of logic, even though it be my own, will persuade me to do so, to give up on morality. The irony of this statement is actually best uh, appreciated in light of his repeated claims of his brother, where he said this, 
Uh, I would rather be mad with truth than sane with lies. That is, that's an astounding, that's a really bold can, can you say that? I don't think I could say that. I don't think I could say something like that. He's saying that I would rather go insane as long as I had the truth mm -hmm. than keep my sanity on a pack of lies. Mm -hmm. That's a very bold thing to say. I'm not sure I could say that. But, but it seems that this very bold statement comes with a pause, a little footnote. And if you read the footnote, it says, I'd rather be mad with truth than sane with lies, unless, of course, I have to face the kind of truth that drove Frederick Nietzsche and his madness and shaped his madness. Uh, unless I have to face the kind of truth that would make me jettison my morality and fall into insanity. So I hope you can see the tension between these two statements, right? 